happy Friday, everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about alcohol on a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. I get this question a lot. So can one have a drink if they're trying to follow a whole foods, low carbohydrate, high fat diet? Well, before we actually answer that, let's talk just a little bit about alcohol. So alcohol, when it comes to the studies about alcohol, some show that light to moderate alcohol consumption can actually improve insulin sensitivity and potentially actually decrease cardiovascular risk. Now there are certainly plenty of other studies that show that moderate or heavier chronic alcohol consumption can actually cause type 2 diabetes, obesity, and therefore obviously making insulin sensitivity worse. So why the difference? Well, it really is dose dependent. So there is a very big difference between a little bit of alcohol and a lot of alcohol. Okay, so when we talk about the metabolism of alcohol, alcohol is metabolized in the liver. So when alcohol comes into the liver, it goes through many biochemical reactions. And early on in the metabolism of alcohol, a byproduct is created that actually can cause reactive oxygen species otherwise known as free radicals. You may have heard something about free radicals. They cause a problem with all kinds of aspects of our health. They can be involved in cardiovascular disease, cancer, um, so the creation of these can be a problem. Now, during that step, one of the things that we also know is someone who is otherwise following a nutrient-dense diet and has enough micronutrients, remember our discussion last week, those reactive oxygen species can actually be neutralized, if you will, by a adequate micronutrient balanced diet. So therefore, going through further on in the metabolism of alcohol, we come to the endpoints. And alcohol's endpoint can either be into the mitochondria to be used as energy, or it can actually be made into fat, de novo lipogenesis. And if you remember way back when, when we talked about carbohydrates becoming fat in the blood, that's what it would be called, de novo lipogenesis, so making new fat. So obviously, that's not desirable and can be a problem. And all oh, that goes back to that whole dose-dependent nature of it again. Well, when we look at this de novo lipogenesis, of course we know also carbohydrates can create de novo lipogenesis. And so therefore, there's been a lot of parallels drawn between the metabolism of alcohol and the metabolism of fructose, specifically in the carbohydrate world. In fact, there's been some great papers written by Dr. Robert Lustig, who's been a wonderful pioneer in the anti-fructose movement, um, written on this subject. And with today's lecture, just like last week, I'm going to post a couple of um, resources for you for extra reading if you want. And one is a really great paper um, by Dr. Lustig comparing fructose metabolism to alcohol metabolism. Um, so if you're interested in this, um, I highly recommend reading that further. Alcohol eventually can wind up as fat, um, and if we drink too much of it, it can wind up as a lot of fat in the liver, the last place we want fat to be, because of course that creates the scenario for insulin resistance. Alcohol also has seven calories per gram, which puts it different from the four calories per gram that we see in carbohydrates and proteins and the nine calories per gram in fat. So caloric-wise, it falls right in the middle. Alcohol is pretty much considered empty calories. Now, alcohol does not create an insulin response. So when we drink alcohol, we won't have that spike. Now, it doesn't mean that things that come along with the alcohol might not cause an insulin response, but alcohol itself does not. So let's get back to our question. Can you drink alcohol on a low-carb, high-fat diet? And the answer is, it all depends on what kind and how much. So ultimately, you can enjoy an occasional glass of wine or an alcoholic drink. You just have to be cautious of how frequently you do it, how much you have at a setting, and what kind of carb content comes along with the alcohol. So a glass of wine a few times a week is going to be 
something that's going to be fine. Alcohol, um, as, or excuse me, wine as a general rule, has about a carbon ounce. So figure that a glass of dry red or dry white wine, five ounces in a portion size, has roughly five carbs. A harder alcohol like vodka, gin, they don't have any carbohydrates to go with them. They do still have fat, they still have the potential for de novo lipogenesis, but really the most important thing if they are being consumed in light to moderate quantities is what they're being mixed with. That's what you have to be cautious about. So instead of a rum and coke, make sure you choose a rum and a diet coke. And as far as beer goes, one of the things we have to remember about beer is they're grain-based, so that could be a concern. But also there is a very wide variability in the carbohydrate content of beers. So some of the beers can be very low carbohydrate, like Michelob Ultra, which is like 2.6 carbs per beer. Um, tends to be a little bit on the watery side, but if you want to drink beer and you want something that's a little less watery, Amstel Light, Corona Light, those are a little bit more full-bodied and they have five carbs per beer. Heineken Light has about 6.8. So many of the light beers you'll find are going to be in the under 10 range. The real problem comes in with the craft beer um, because that tends to be very high in the carbohydrate count. So again, as part of the supplementary material here today, I'm going to post a nice link to a site that rates the calories and the carb content of many of the most popular beers. So ultimately, if you want to have a light beer, a low carbohydrate mixed drink, or a glass of wine, go ahead and have it. Just remember, we want to keep the portion sizes in control, we want to keep the frequency of it in control, and we always want to make sure we know what the carb content of each individual drink actually is. I hope this helps with this question. Everyone, have a wonderful weekend.